Hello and welcome to season two of Frank Talks. I'm Carlina Muller and I'm the founder of Art Frankly and I'd like to introduce to you my co-host Ellie Hayworth who's the founder of Hayworth, an art consultancy committed to promoting intrepid ideas in art and design. Today we are speaking with Katie Gruby who is the curator and program manager for the California studio, the Minetti Shrem Artist Residencies at UC Davis. The California Studio brings a group of internationally renowned artists annually to the Department of Art and Art History at UC Davis. We are excited to learn more about this program as well as to hear about Katie's expertise, expertise in East Asia studies. So Ellie, I will let you get the interview going. Amazing, thank you Carlina and Katie. I'm really excited to chat today. Great to be here, thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so we always like to kind of kick off these conversations by talking about everyone's kind of unique journey to art. So what was it that compelled you to pursue a career in the arts? You know, I, my career in the arts really began um, with an internship at the Works of Art Department, the Chinese Works of Art Department at Christie's in New York. And mm -hmm. it was there. Um, I, sort of, I graduated from Stanford with a degree in history and didn't really know what to do with it, but knew I was really interested in objects. And Christie's really gave me um, a great platform to, to begin to explore that. I, I was there for, through two auction cycles and really became quite fascinated with a career um, in the arts and, and working with objects for really two reasons. You know, I think the first was I became really interested in the ways in which um, cultural, political, economic, and political transformations could be traced through stylistic choices. Mm -hmm. And, 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 um, and then I also became really excited about the idea of developing a really specialized knowledge in a, in a subfield. And that's what ultimately um, took me to China. I realized pretty quickly that if I wanted to stay working with in, in Chinese art, I needed the language skills to do so. And so after that internship, I went and worked um, uh, did an intensive language program in Beijing, and it was in and, and it was there that I became really interested in contemporary art. Um, the contemporary art world in 2004 and 2005 in China was really taking off, and it was in sort of the last week and quite fortuitously of of my language program that I actually found a job in a gallery in what was then this up and coming arts district called 798. Yeah. Um, and so I started, and, and which, I, which you and, and probably everyone know in the art world knows is sort of the center of the commercial art world in Beijing, if not in, in China. And um, that sort of evolved into um, a brief stint as an art consultant, um, but all throughout that just being really um, swept up in the tide of, of sort of a rising um, contemporary art scene in China. I love that. That's really, really interesting. And I appreciate that you have this interesting kind of um, dual expertise, if you will, because coming from a very kind of academically driven interest in art going into a Christie's, which is obviously a very commercial entity, but, you know, provenance and obviously, you know, historicity and all of these kind of um, aspects of the object are, are critical to, you know, Christie's business practice. And then obviously, you know, heading to China, I'm curious to hear a little bit about maybe how you've applied some of the knowledge that you learned in the commercial sector to what you're doing today, which, you know, I think is quite steeped in academia by, by traditional standards. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, I feel like if, if I could talk about the first, first sort of 15 years of my career as swinging across two vastly different pendulums, you know, I, I started working in China in this completely new and really just sort of wild west type environment of, sure. of the art world. And it was very fast paced and I was working in a gallery. So, you know, you, you know, managing a 11 show per year calendar and working with artists and client facing, and then sort of did this entirely completely to pivot to sort of to, um, to a master's in Sydney and then a, and then a PhD at NYU. And, and pivoted to um, very solitary work. Research is yeah. ultimately very solitary. Um, the, the, the drive, you have to really find, have a drive from within to, to, sure. to and, um, persevere. Um, and so I think now I've found with this role at UC Davis, sort of a balance between the two. I've really enjoyed being in programming and programming for an academic setting. Um, really, we're, we're creating a program um, that is focused on studio art education and student engagement. And so there is a, a piece of this that is informed by this 
you know, uh, working to select artists that would be a good fit for that. Um, and that, uh, you know, that, that is very informed by this, this 15 year career. Um, I, you know, I think I'm also, I'm a very late bloomer. I think I'm finally finding my footing and that balance that works for me. Um, and so I, and, and, and perhaps approaching my career in a much more balanced fashion versus like, this didn't work. I've got to do something else. And um, perhaps that comes with age as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I think it's interesting. It's very relatable actually across a lot of the Frank talks that we've done. You know, we all, well, perhaps not across the board, but there are a lot of really interesting and engaging stories, I think, in the arts where, you know, we have expertise in so many different facets of the industry and then are therefore able to almost craft, whether it's an entrepreneurial career where you're just, it's an amalgam of all the things that you've accumulated over the years. Or in this case, you know, you are certainly working within an institutional format, but you are able to actually bring all of this prior experience as well to actually fit into a curricula that hopefully will empower the next generation. So I think all of that sounds quite apropos. Um, you mentioned just before we hopped on the, or we clicked record, if you will, on our Zoom, um, that this is a particularly busy time for your program and for your artists. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what's keeping you busy on the day to day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have just launched the program. Um, I, I feel like <laughs> I joined, thank you. We um, I joined UC Davis in October of 2020 and have spent the last 10 months sort of as a what's felt like a shadow organization, um, really recruiting artists for um, for the program, but then also um, forging partnerships across the university mm -hmm. while working closely with the faculty the programs advisory board and then the donors team to um, really hone in on artists that we felt would be make important contributions to the UC Davis community. And so um, what the California studio is, is we're an initial, we're an initial three year grant period. So we have funding for um, this academic year and two subsequent ones. Um, and, it, and it supports uh, two types of artist residencies within the Department of Art and Art History and specifically in the Art Studio Program. Mm -hmm. um, one type of residency is a, um, as a visiting professorship. Um, and these teaching artists are on campus for a full quarter or 10 weeks. And they uh, take on the, the teaching load of a, of a faculty member. So they teach an undergraduate and a graduate course. They give a public mm -hmm. lecture. We provide them with full salary and benefits, a studio space, um, and help them find accommodation in Davis. And uh, those two artists for our first year are Tamari Toon and Beatrice Cortez. And then we have a second stream, which, is, which we're calling Spotlight Artists. Um, and okay. they are artists who are in, in residence for 10, up to 10 days. Um, and they uh, teach an, an advanced undergraduate uh, master class. They conduct graduate student critiques and then also give a public lecture as well. And, and for this first year, um, uh, the, the artist Ra Raul de Nieves, uh, de Nieves yeah, will be here. Yeah, in the fall. Very familiar arrives. with his work. Yeah, he arrives on Sunday. We're getting ready Amazing. for it. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and then in the winter, um, we'll have Jennifer Packer. Yeah. Um, in, in town. And then in the spring, the year will be capped off by, by a residency with uh, Anne Hamilton. Amazing. And, and so, you know, my responsibilities are really vast, you know, in the preparation for Raul's arrival, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, concierge and artist support work. So, sure. um, and that, but, you know, as we think towards um, uh, Jennifer Packer and Anne Hamilton and then Beatrice in the spring, um, you know, and then further on to years two and three, you know, we're really holding a lot of conversations with each artist um, to really craft an experience that is unique to their interests and supports yeah. their research. So in that sense, it's a really exciting program because each residency, whether a spotlight artist or a teaching artist, their residencies look a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to, um, so Raul de Nieves is, is his master class is a really collaborative DIY performance with undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, Jennifer Packer will likely teach a much more traditional um, in studio painting um, class. Um, although, and then Anne Hamilton has expressed interest in doing something with um, UC Davis's extraordinary taxonomic collections of flora and fauna. So they'll, they'll look very different um, over time. And I think we'll are gonna be extraordinary opportunities for our students to both 
uh, explore practice and explore the different uh, and the different ways of being artists, but also the different ways of, of working with materials um, and working with the support of, of the university. So we're pretty excited about it and um, and are really looking forward to, um, to 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 having everyone come through. That's amazing. It sounds like quite a bit of an undertaking, but it also seems like you're already reaping the rewards because the talent alone is obviously, you know, it's it's self, um, it's, it's, I think, demonstrating itself to be true without even having put it quite into practice yet. It's exciting. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit, it sounds to me like you've amalgamated a lot of different, you know, milestones and, and kind of career moments that you can be proud of, but what is one thing that you would say is a great kind of milestone for you? So I'd like to think, and I'm hoping my okay. greatest milestones are still to come, um, okay. <laughs> where there's much to be done, but I mean, there are a handful of things that I'm proud of. I'm, I'm proud of completing my PhD. I, that's, it was a huge undertaking and sure. And if I hadn't already indicated it, you know, um, now I'll make it explicit, you know, writing um, is something that doesn't come very naturally to me. So I'm, I'm proud that I, I did that. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm proud also of receiving a Fulbright and the Robert H. N. Ho a China Research Grant from the Asian Archive to support my research. I think I'm also pretty proud or just uh, somewhat surprised, I think, looking back at 22 year old me that I, you know, built a career in China, in a place that's very far from home and, and in my non-native language and in, in um, uh, a very different cultural environment. Um, so I would say those are the things that, um, yeah, that I look back on with somewhat, I don't know, sometimes you look back at self and you're like, I, I, I did those things I had, you yeah. know, and so I'm a bit yeah. proud of, yeah. That's amazing. Um, so I feel like Katie, you, perhaps beyond many of our, our Frank talks are very well suited to be telling us, you know, what some of the best practices are for kind of ushering in a new generation of arts, whether it's an artist or arts professional, what are some best practices that you encourage either amongst the student body or amongst your fellow kind of um, academic staff? So I think my, uh, first, my broad piece of advice is, you know, the art world really thrives on opacity. And so I think there's a way of really standing out by being um, honest and transparent. And I yeah. think approaching, you can have an outsized ambition, but approaching that with a, through humility. Um, and yeah. I, I think that those are really um, positive traits that allow, you know, I, that I look for in partners in the art world. Um, and get excited about when when um, when I discover them in people. Yeah. Um, I think um, you know the project um, at uh, the program at UC Davis is very um, has a lot of um, stakeholders, um, mm. and so that's great because it you know a lot of people care about the success of the sure. program. So when something needs to happen, it usually happens. But in terms of um, everyday maintenance of interpersonal connections and, and communication of expectations that takes, that's a lot of, of my time. And so I think um, what I always try to emphasize as, you know, we're trying to mobilize this big university and, and is just to, is I, I try to urge, urge patience. Yeah. <laughs> um, amongst sort of my, my colleagues and, um, uh, and I think that's been the biggest, because you know, sometimes working in these big organizations, you send something, you know, uh, send something out for approval and it disappears into the ether and you sort of <laughs> wait for it to come back. And so um, I think that's been my biggest, I think, growth area. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think those are all like critical pieces of advice. Um, and I certainly think we're, hopefully we're moving towards a bit more of a transparent art market. Um, but I think patience, whether it's in the professional sector or the personal sector, is something that we can all hone every day. Um, so, no, I, I very much appreciate that. And we've been kind of rounding out these interviews with um, a, hopefully an optimistic forward look at a return to normalcy. Um, I, we actually didn't ask, are you guys holding, is everything being done in person and we're back to? Yeah, that's been, what I think, one of the most exciting um, right aspects of the program is that we're able as of right now to hold um, all classes are in person. Um, Davis has rolled out a very um, 
ambitious and successful vaccination program. Yeah. I think eight percent of campus staff, faculty, wow, yeah. and students yeah. are vaccinated, and and um, so we're back to normal. Um, and all of our public uh, lectures will be um, in person. And yeah. um, we're hoping to welcome a lot of a lot of the Davis community and in our community to them. So I love that. Yeah. And if so, if that doesn't cover maybe the question, but we, we, you know, we're kind of ending on the note of what are you looking forward to for this year? And, you know, certainly I think all of those things are, you know, present milestones that are really exciting, but is there something either personally or professionally that you are looking forward to? Yeah, I think the most exciting thing for me now that we're back in person is just being in community again. Yeah. Um, and being, um, with my colleagues, but also with students um, and being able to collaborate in really substantial ways and to realize projects both spontaneous, like spontaneous and sure. um, both and then long-term and planned. Um, that's been really fun to sort of be in it again and to feel like, um, you know, we can move in lockstep um, and have, and I'm, it's also been really nice. I think there's a lot of miscommunication that can happen <laughs> over email and over Zoom sure. and, so, and that's resolved in person. So there's a little bit of the everyday that's gotten simpler, but I think in, in general, the, the overall vibe is one of enthusiasm to be, to gotcha. be together. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I think we're, you know, it is a, it is a people industry at the end of the day. And I, actually it's really a people world <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> and so I think that this has certainly been the common thread. Um, I think everyone's really excited to be back in, in community. So I think that's a wonderful note to end on. And I've enjoyed chatting with you. And I think, you know, you're quite stellar, Katie. So it's fun that we've gotten the opportunity to chat. Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to be here.